Royal operators encouraged by upcoming 2.5 gigahertz auction. This is from Sue Merrick. April 13th was the date of the article, fiercewireless.com. Let me explain to you guys why I think this is going to impact T-Mobile's bottom line moving into the auction, Spectrum Auction 108. For those of you that are aware, and some of you maybe are not, Spectrum Auction 108 is for the last remaining available licenses for T-Mobile's frequency that they use for the N41, which is 2.5 gigahertz mid-band frequency. T-Mobile obviously has a big stake in it, and they want to shore up the rest of it, which is in these white spaces. Essentially, they're locations in between larger PEAs or markets that they can kind of fulfill all those coverage gaps where they don't have the N41. They can get these remaining and available licenses and pretty much secure a national footprint of wide, deep channel N41. But it looks like they are indeed going to have some competition. So the auction will take place July 29th for the rest of the spectrum. And the FCC's format is something that I think gives uh, T-Mobile an advantage. So all that has kind of worked out pretty nicely. They haven't had to disclose any information about you know what they pay for these licenses and leases. And that'll probably keep Verizon and AT&T out of this. But it looks like rural or regional-based carriers are going to be involved here. It says here, we like this auction because it's rural-focused. This according to the CEO of Cellcom a Wisconsin-based operator. He went on to say that big operators tend to scoop in some of the areas that everybody wants, and then that makes prices go up. So this could be essentially an opportunity for them to get involved and compete for these licenses, and they can build out their own 5G networks. The issue is here is that T-Mobile has deeper pockets than them. T-Mobile is a national mobile network operator that has essentially been saving their bags for this auction to secure the last remaining bits and pieces of their fragmented N41. So he says here, uh, and this is CEO of Appalachian Wireless, Alan Gilliam, said, we will participate in it on a county-by-county basis. So they get to kind of try to pick their spots where they want to get licenses, and that's good for them because they don't want to compete with national providers for large swaths of spectrum. They want to pick their spots get it, and then they can build out their networks in the places where they offer native coverage. So uh, they'll be taking a hard look at this, according to him. And I I guess this kind of impacts T-Mobile because it means that there are going to be competitors in some of these places. So don't be surprised if some of the pricing does kind of kick up, you know, on a per megahertz pop basis on T-Mobile in some instances where these carriers want to get involved. Uh, Because they want to build out their 5G networks, too, even though they are regional, even though they have their little pockets where they offer native coverage, uh, they, too, also want to get involved here. So it it obviously is very valuable, and multiple entities want to get involved, even if it's not Verizon or AT&T. Moving on to the next story, 23% of postpaid subs would consider cable MVNO. According to a survey, this is Linda Hardis, the April 19th dated, Fierce Wireless. All right, so here is the data. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size and we can kind of take a look at this. It's asking the question, would you consider switching to a cable MVNO, being Xfinity or Spectrum Mobile, bundling wireless with broadband? And what we notice here is there is a trend, and that is those that are a little bit younger, right, indicate something of, yes, I am considering a switch. So, wow, um, it may not be substantial, right? It may not be some huge numbers there, but it looks here like the postpaid wireless consumer would consider a switch to a cable MVNO for their mobile service. And it goes with age. And I think friend of the show, Roger Enner spoke to this, you know, it's it, the switcher pool does actually consist of a demographic that is younger. The more mature demographics tend to kind of be loyal, I guess they, they kind of stick to the premise of it. Ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But uh, some of the things that do hamper the potential growth of these carriers, these mobile network operator MVNO type situations with big cable is they only sell their wireless service to those that have their home internet service. And that makes sense because they don't make much money on mobile service. In fact, they're probably essentially breaking even in in some ways, I think, uh, because they have to compete and beat the MNOs. uh, And then they just they make the money by keeping the customers sticky on home ISP. So younger cohorts tend to leave the carriers more frequently. Uh, the older ones tend to stick. So it's harder for them to get them. But 